Hello, my name is Aperture B, and I play with 12,000 DPI at 4.75 in game. That is 57,000 EDPI, and that's currently a world record. I have a medical condition, which uh, doesn't allow me to play games normally with my hands, and it hurts to move a lot. So I just decided not to move, and apparently that's not normal. Who would have thought? So, that was the intro of Aperture B. He is a heavy main, and he uh, plays with insanely high DPI, as you saw, and often gets kicked from casual because people think he's cheating. And I mean, I'm gonna slow it down just a little bit. I think he does it. Yeah, look at this turn here. This is at 10% uh, of normal speed, and you can see that he turns <laughs> fairly quickly. It was like, it's like three frame turn, right? And it looks, it looks pretty weird, so just be advised that if you have epilepsy or some shit like that, then this might not be uh, the best uh, f for you, so just, just be aware. And also, Aperture B wanted me to give that a warning. So yeah, we're gonna, just going to be examining his place and see how he does as a heavy with this insanely high DPI. So his sensitivity is so high that, like you said in the video, he barely moves his uh, hand and he can do like, you know, a 180 and if he moves his mouse normally, like the heavy just spins like nor like crazy. And also when he plays other games, like it glitches out because it's just too fast, it's too much. It's too much value for the human computer build computer to handle, right? Anyway, that's the deal. So he's actually pretty decent heavy as well, he's played competitively has fairly good game sense, or as good a game sense as you get from Heavy. He's using the Banana and Tomislav for the most part, and we're just gonna see how he plays. So one thing that he can do pretty much effortlessly is check his back and kind of like shoot in two directions at the same time. That's probably pretty hard to do because even though you increase your DPI this much, there's, there's gonna be some suffering to how you're aiming. However, he's able to compensate fairly well for it, but there are some times where his extremely high sensitivity uh, is making him miss a lot more. And that is because when you're tracking at that high sensitivity, it's going to be pretty difficult at some ranges. But because he's playing heavy, it works really, really well because of how the, sp uh, the spread works and all that stuff. So here, you can see he's actually able to land consistent shots at this distance and also keep like full control of his movements. You can see he has full control over where he goes and where he moves and everything sort of has a purpose, right? So here he's just waiting for, you know, someone to come to him, which they do, turn around and check for spies. So this guy is probably a spy's worst nightmare. I mean, you might get one stab of him and then he knows you're coming for him and then that'll be the end of it. So, going in for a little push here, going to be doing okay, gonna jump the corner, and let's take a look at the, his aim in slow motion, because I think, like, that's really cool. So you can see here that he's actually missing a lot, overshoots the demo, but then corrects it instantly. Alright. That, that's sort of what he does, and he does it really fast. So I'm not sure if he has inhuman reaction time, and I think he is within, like, normal reaction time, like, you know, between 160 and 200 milliseconds, where 200 milliseconds is like grandma reaction time. And 180, 190 is where like most people live in terms of reaction. So I think this is where a demo man is gonna be charging in a second here. Okay, so there's a sniper. And you can see that he's actually missing some shots, but he's always making like tiny adjustments and he's able to hit these shots quite consistently. He actually lands quite a lot of them. The sniper just dies super fast. So actually having this high sense actually works out if you're able to like get the proper spray right. And I think that's what a lot of people think when he's cheating. But you can see he's making the snappy movements even when nothing's there. So here comes the demo again and he just absolutely gets destroyed. I'm not sure how much health that demo had, but he died after taking 80 damage, so... It's kind of big. And there comes Fly and there's nothing he can do and he dies. Also throws banana to friends. A shared banana is a good banana. So here comes the demo man, and uh, yeah, that's the clip I wanted to show. So here he comes with the clip where the demo is coming pretty high speeds. So here is the scream that you could hear, and here's the demo. And you can see that he's sort of like lagging behind and then catches up, shoots a little bit, overshoots like this, he hits the wall there. And then he hits the demo for... Yeah, 33, and then looks away because he knows he can't do it. 
So one thing I just wanted to make sure that when I am doing this this slowly, the bullet is actually at the wall before this animation plays. So you will actually see that, that the bullets actually, or the damage is done before the bullet hits, and that's because it's hit scan, it's instant, while the animation is not. There's another banana, and he's gonna keep on going forward here. Now they have Uber, so he's gonna go forward. So this is this is pretty interesting. He's gonna go forward here. Here, catch us a medic and an uh, engineer. And then... <laughs> and then PB in the chat is like... Mm. Yeah, so let's take uh, a look at that again. Alright, so I'm, I'm gonna slow it down here. So he kills the medic. Gets hit by the scout once. The scout misses and hits the concrete. And he... <laughs> Did you see how fast that was? So I just want to keep you in mind that you can see how slowly everything is going. And that is because we're only going at like, you know, 10% of normal speed. And he turned that fast. So let's just go and see where he kills the medic, right? So here's the scout, hit him. Here is the medic kill. Right? There it is. Now let's go frame by frame. See? That's not many frames. Turn around. You can also see that he doesn't quite hit the scout yet. He has to, like, adjust. And I think that just has to do with human reaction time. Like, how fast can you actually see something? Because he, he, like, normal players, when they turn around, they turn around so slowly that they're actually able to see whatever they're seeing as they turn around. Like, you know, my sensitivity, this is my sensitivity. So when I turn around, like, sort of like this, I will like already see the character, like I will see the soldier slide into my screen and I'll know he's there. But Aperture Black is so fast that he's already there before like he's, because he goes almost directly from this to this in just a couple of frames. So he's actually fully turned around and his eyes are still processing what he's seeing. So if we look at this again, it's gonna kill the medic. And you'll see he gets hit now, so he knows there's a scout behind him. Then the scout misses and hits the concrete. Turns around. And he's almost at the scout. And then he spends some time adjusting the aim to then get the kill. And it's just ludicrous how good that is against scout. <laughs> PB, like, mm. And, you know, normally if this was casual, be like, this heavy is cheating. Yeah, yeah, kick him. Which is what happens. So he only plays community servers in the US. So, yeah. He roams Uncle Dane servers and some creator servers, and I'm trying to get him to play Balance Mod, which is kind of what I'm doing this. Um, also to get some expert feedback on the Balance Mod, of course. But yeah, it's just, it's just when I saw this, I was just randomly going around Twitch, and I just saw this guy. I was like, God, this guy's freaking amazing. It's so interesting. Because normally when people turn around, like, you'll see the target, you know, enter your screen. But if you turn around instantly, it's already there. So it's like maximizing your reaction time. So that's pretty good. So, you, you can just see how fast it is, and you, I can't imagine how hard it will be for spies to, to backstab this guy if he knows you're there. If he does, like, the spin thing. Or even for snipers to headshot him if he just looks up and just th throws his mouse across the mouse pad. So right now, he's being a bit patient, which makes sense, because he's wait well, he got two kills. But he's waiting for his medic to have Uber, because, you know, this is Barn Bliss last, and you are not gonna win Barn Bliss last unless you get lucky or the red team sucks. So he's just kind of uh, going up here, and they're looking to go uh, go in here. So he can't do much here, so he's just gonna eat the banana. Here comes the medic, and the medic has Uber. All right, so I'm gonna slow it down so you can just see how he aims, right? Because I think it's so fascinating. Well, let's look at it normal speed first. And then he dies. All right, so the push is just starting. So I'm gonna slow it down there. We're actually gonna see how his high sensitivity actually works with this normal aim. So you can see in the beginning, he's missing a lot on the soldier. Actually missing quite a lot because he's trying to adjust uh, the aim because the soldier was strafing. So now he's going down. You can see he's missing a lot of shots and eventually connects and kills uh, the soldier. Then as a sentry, a couple of medics. Right now, uh, killing the medic would probably 
be the better choice, but like I mentioned, your effective field of view is this. So this medic is essentially invisible in the moment of time because all his focus is probably on this sentry. And then he gets launched back by the Scorch Shot Pyro and then pushed even further by the sentry. However, he is able to get it. So now you're in the spot where there's a couple of Pyros. There's no way you can actually push forward here uh, because the Pyros will just push you back. So he's just kind of staying in the spot trying to shoot. You can see that he's trying to adjust, but there's a pillar in the way. He did just like I do, and I don't care if there's a pillar there. But here you can see he's having some troubles. He overshoots the demo. You can see he hit the wall several times, and then he overshoots the demo again, hits the other wall, and then he, he's kind of just he's kind of just doing this in front of the demo, which is kind of like what you have to do with this high aim, because being precise is extremely difficult. And then, yeah, he got, he got the kill on that demo, and then he kind of, like, here is where he messes up, because Sniper at Huntsman, you kind of have to stay really, really close to kill him really quickly, and then he gives him some space, and the sniper pops out, and, like, you basically you're dead. Like, he could maybe have crouched, but probably wouldn't have saved him at that angle. So, there we can see, like, some, some problems. I think this is, like, this doesn't just apply to him, but this applies to all heavy, where you just aren't able to properly track. But because his sensitivity is just so different, he has different problems. <laughs> The fact is that uh, normally is that most heavies can't keep up, but his problem is, sorry, he's going too far. It's kind of like, if ma imagine if you're climbing a mountain, you'd be like, I'm going to go to that mountaintop. And then you have this Mr. Overachiever here who just fucking jumps over the mountain, and he's like, ah, damn it, I jumped too far, I have to jump back. <laughs> and then he has to jump, like, halfway across the other mountain just to get back to the first mountain. That's kind of like what it is, you know, like luxury problems. So, I asked him to play Sniper, but he didn't do it. He only played Heavy. But I do think this sort of sensitivity is only really viable for Heavy because of how Heavy works. It might be a bit difficult to do this with Soldier, and I can imagine Rocket Jumping might be a bitch, because it's hard to be very accurate. But with Heavy, you sort of just have to... Well, he did use a smaller crosshair, but you sort of just have to put everything inside this, and you're fine. Right? So that means you can afford to be a bit inaccurate, and it's, it's not a problem. All right, so let's take a look. Oh, yeah. Doing the, doing the spins. Yep. So even though he turns quickly, his aim's not perfect. Because, you know, he's a human player. And not a cheater, mech cheater, son. So he's just taking up a, a backward position here. And they kind of have to bail here. Because, you know, Uber coming in, forest. There's that soldier. We're going to be seeing a lot of him. Because he makes some interesting plays here. Kills the heavy, kills the medic. And then goes back. So all he did there was just kind of point in the direction where they were, and they died. So this is another interesting uh, aspect here, where he is going to go and take a freaking three-frame turn, or something like that. So he's going to go up here, shoot a little, and then he's going to run back and stand on the little ceiling there. So, or the little roof here. So he goes here. So let's see. It's, it's, yeah, it's after he lands. He's going to do the 360, so... He looks this way, shoots the wall for some reason. <laughs> That's not lag. That's just him turning three frames and how the demo adjusts for it. So yeah, that's uh, and, and he he can he can do that reliably. And then he dies, like we all do. He's taking a defensive position here. Just gonna fast forward. Kind of just waiting for the enemies to come. Like that's such a fortified position that it makes sense not to go any further. Catches a sniper sleeping, catches a pyro weeping. It's gonna be fixing the HUD. Runs into a heavy. And also here, very interesting moment. So here he's gonna be running into that heavy. So he sees the heavy, hits him, and just unloads into him, and then actually hit manages to hit the wall there. A little bit. You can see there's just like a couple of shots on the wall there. And that's probably because he over-aimed a little bit and then adjusted. And I would say like super up close, stuff like this can happen. Like if this was normal, uh, like if you had normal sensitivity, it would be very easy to just have every single bullet hit and keep, hit and keep the... He's using the Tommy Slob, which uh, if you're not being accurate, it actually punishes you. So to miss a heavy up close with the Tommy Slob at that sort of range shows that, you know, it's... It's like, you might think you're hitting all the shots, but you're not. <laughs> you're actually missing some. Now, keep in mind, I haven't been, like, this thorough 
my own heavy place, you know, in the same same direction. So there's actually zero comparison here. But it's just I'm just showing you what happens. But you can see he's he's managing just fine. There's a couple of cases where he's not able to track properly. It's pretty difficult. But for the most part, he's doing fine. And because he can turn so easy and effortlessly, he has full overview of the battlefield at any point in time. Because he can do a three-frame turn back and forth and just see if there's stuff there, right? But keep in mind, like, if you like, what's the point of turning if you you can't process what you're seeing, right? That's what a lot of players do when they are um, playing TF2 and they realize that, oh god, I gotta be checking my back. And then they check their backs so quick that they don't actually see what's there and they turn around. So that's kind of like something to be careful about. And I think that's what he does here, but I think he's like, he will turn around, see that something's there, turn back, and then his brain's like, wait, something was there, and then turn around again and then shoot it. And because he turns so freaking fast, he it's, it's fine, he can do it, no problem, easy. Very, very interesting, for sure. That's all because some disability or handicap making you be very creative and giving giving power and other other stuff. So, it's I, I I think this is just so cool. This is so cool, man. So here we had an example of him just turning around a lot, and this is actually a very good moment here. So. If that wasn't a soldier, the medic and him would be dead for sure. But because he didn't eat the banana, his medic actually lived. And then he can... <laughs> what a bitch scout! Did you see that? <laughs> Replay that shit. <laughs> oh my god, he's just like, Oh, medic's at half health, but I need this health. Give... <laughs> yeah, we, we, we got you on camera. And here, a scout's gonna be coming. Gonna slow it down. So there's a scout, and we're gonna see how he tracks in slow motion, right? Here comes the scout. Start shooting. Tracking very well. You can see he's hitting the wall a couple of times. Overshoots, adjusts, overshoots, overjusts. And he did exactly what I'm talking about to compensate. Kills the scout. Because what he's doing is that if, if this is the, if, if the soldier's the target, he will aim up to the soldier go too far, go back, and kind of just sort of like zone in like this, like this, doing like this half and half stuff. So if you look at this again in real time, what this looks like, imagine you were spectating this guy. <laughs> it looks like he's cheating. But the kind of like lo -lo -lo movement it does there, that's to, to compensate for any inaccuracies in the aim. And because you have a spread on your weapon as a heavy, there's no reason not to. I'm sure all of you who have played heavy has done that at some point. Where it's like, ah, I don't want to track him, I'll just freaking aim in his general direction and hope I hit something. So I think one thing that won't bother this guy at all, we haven't seen too much of it, but usually a lot of heavies, they will struggle if uh, there's like really good scouts, like competitive level scouts, and they jump over you. Most heavies will struggle to aim. But, um,. Being an ex super high sensitivity myself, like nowhere near this guy, but I did have like, you know, three times the sensitivity I had now, and I played heavy in the beginning of TF2. You, there's absolutely no problems in tracking scouts whatsoever. If a scout runs up to you and you have this sort of aim and mastery of your sensitivity, they're just gonna die regardless of how good they are. Because no matter how much they strafe and jump and move, you're always going to be overcompensating, so your crosshair is always going to be where they are going to be before they are there. So. Most people, when they aim, they uh, they kind of like catch up to the character, or they just put stuff in front and wait for the character to walk into the crosshair. But uh, with him, like I mentioned, the mountains, he's just kind of jumping back and forth over them, spraying back and forth at a very high and fast rate, which isn't really possible unless you have this sort of high sensitivity. So it's just really cool to see, I think. Definitely should uh, reevaluate a lot of players who are like, oh, you have to have low sense to be good. Well, you have to have high sense to be good. Well, you need medium sense to be good. It's actually all up to the individual player. Personally, I played a lot with the high sense, mid sense, and low sense, and my results were about the same. Because if you're good, you can compensate for anything. And I, I did find, you know, sniping with low sense to be a bit easier on longer distance, but mid range and close range was really hard, and then vice versa. High sense makes long range sniping a bit diff more difficult to finesse the, the headshots. 
while uh, low low sense it's easier. But for heavy, who cares? You can just do this. So let's see. Will he check his back? Here? Oh, okay, I think this is where he just really overextends. Yeah, he just keeps shooting and shooting and shooting, and he doesn't have any heals and shoot back here, but it does, and then he dies. Ah, oh, rookie mistake, bro! And you also got the double revenge on him. He's probably just a nice guy and be like, well, I've been dominating these guys all game. I guess I better just, uh, you know, die. <laughs> Very bad impression of him. There's that scout again. And there. He did sort of what you should never do. Oh yeah, this is actually funny. All right, let's look at that again. So here he goes and kills the scout, right? So the scout has basically just run in his face and it's pretty hard not to miss, but you can see he's overcompensating a lot if the scout would still be moving. So the scout's dead, he just didn't register that the scout was dead, and then you just kind of fluck around like, will he, will he go here or here? So he's like, basically doing in fighting games what we call option coverage. Like, the scout's either gonna go left or right, so I'm just gonna shoot left then right. So I'll like do a 50-50 where he goes first. But anyway, we're gonna be focusing on this soldier here, because this is truly interesting. So he knows the soldier's on the right side, and you can see that there's a scout and pyro kind of keeping the focus. This is the soldier, so keep in mind, like, he jumps, and he's like, all right, there he is, I've registered. I'm gonna be tracking him now, and the soldier's dead. But, you know, you don't register that he's dead until like a little while later, and he's like, oh yeah, he's dead, I don't have to do anything because of the audio cue. So, I, like, I just got a message from him saying this, and his uh, response times is between 175 and 180 milliseconds, but you have faster response times to, um, to sound, I think, if I'm not just talking out of my ass. So, yeah. That's uh, that's an important thing to to keep in mind. But yeah, it's, it's just so cool. You can see that like he also plays a lot of fighting games, and I've recently gotten into like you know very like competitive Smash and stuff. And what's called option coverage is basically like what options does the opponent have when you're putting pressure on them, and then how can you cover them from or punish them from doing either of those options. We can see him like, well, will you run left or right? Well, I'll just shoot left and right at the same time, basically. So Aaron is a bit of a press, uh, pressure situation. He's using the mid-range capabilities of the Tomislav. Moving around, he's having full control of where everyone is, and I think he probably remembers too. So if he sees something that's out of uh, line, he'll probably know that there's a spy there. Keep in mind, he hasn't... I don't think he's died to a spy once. And we haven't really seen that many either. I mean, there was an invisible spy that just died right in front of him, but the spies haven't really been able to target him as much as they should. And somehow, I think he survives this. No, he dies. Just kidding. He died that one. So, going for the Barn Bliss defense, which lasts forever. And I do think they hold it. Yeah, they hold it. <laughs> Some seven minutes more of the demo, so it's definitely gonna hold it. Dies there. That's fine. Like, the, the ES team is bunkering down, so there's no issue whatsoever. Hides in the corner. Hides in the dispenser. Oh, look, a spy that couldn't kill him. It's the PB guy. You can see that this is pretty good. Oh, <laughs> it's that spy again. Oh, so unlucky. Well, it's Gritzkrieg. It's able to do wonders. And then PB is just like, I. This guy's tight, yo. So it's so bizarre to see like these super twitchy movements. And it's just because he's like, like, what, what does it look like when he sneezes? You know, you know, a normal player when you sneeze is like, <laughs> but with him he's like, true. <laughs> Oops, I forgot to turn off drive. Anyway, all right, there's Pyro. Just dies. Probably low. Sniper gets crit screen. Does the uh, so he's called the overturn correction, or you just do the blah 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 blah. Works fine. He probably has some good understanding of the spread too for the Thomas Love, so he knows like where to shoot to maximize getting most of the damage. But for most players, it doesn't really matter. It's like Tommy Slav, mid long range, um, have minigun when there's a lot of people in close range. Yeah, that's basically it. So, Chris Craig, not gonna do much against Ubered players. But when Uber fades, it's gonna die. 
Uh, he has full control. If any spies tries to sneak up on him, he will definitely see it. And he hasn't died to a spy so far. So far, the spies only died to him. Uh, like, playing scout on Barmbless last on blue, unless you're pushing the cart, it's kind of pointless. But they don't have a sentry farm yet. They just have, you know, demo explosives everywhere. So they have a pretty good... Pretty good stop here, and like they like blue team really has to do some good stuff here to even be able to even do anything about this. All right, so I think that's gonna be concluding it fairly soon here, because you know they're gonna win in a minute and 45 seconds. So really interesting to see this sort of super high world record DPI from from this player, and I would say he's a pretty good heavy. Like I don't think there's a like he compensates so well for kind of like the issues with his playstyle of having like really high sensitivity. And because Heavy works the way he does and he's able to compensate with like just, you know, shimming his crosshair back and forth and doing like the option covers close range. Cause he can like basically shoot left and right comfortably and hit like people every other time. So it's just a matter of having like the reaction time to register because he definitely has the mastery of the movement as you can see for the most part. Like, there will be some instances where he's not able to properly adjust and he keeps missing a lot, like we saw earlier with the heavy. But uh, f for regular play, definitely it works just fine. So if you ever meet anyone that says, like, you can't play with a high sense, it's like, well, you just have to get used to it, you know? There are players who play with the wrong sensitivity and never adjust and never learn, and they're just continuously bad because they're either constantly over-aiming or under-shooting their targets, right? By over-aiming is like you aim too far, you like you jump over the mountain, and then under-aiming is like you face-plant halfway there. You don't really reach the target. So it's all about how do you compensate for when that happens. And it's way easier to compensate if you go a bit too far to just go back if you move really quickly, like uh, Aperture does. So I'm hoping to see this guy on the balance mod to check out the heavy changes. If you see this guy, kill him for me. Because he never dies too much. Oh, he died just by! He died just by! And that's the end of it. He died to the one thing he should be countered. Yes. So, if you want more coaching, like this this was me requesting him do a demo because it was so interesting. If you want to have a coaching demo, please submit it to me. Link is in the description on how to do that. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.